Horatio Gordon Hutchinson was an English amateur golfer and occasional writer. Born in 1859 in London, the son of General William Nelson Hutchinson and Mary Russell. He was educated at Corpus Christi College, Oxford, where he made great strides as a golf player, helping Oxford beat Cambridge in the university golf match. His family's caddy and houseboy was an orphan, John Henry Taylor, and he assisted Hutchinson as caddy many times, and would eventually become a famous golfer himself. In 1886 and 1887, Hutchinson won the British Open Championship. In 1893, he married Dorothy Margaret Chapman. In 1910, he became director of the West End branch of the Royal Exchange Assurance Corporation, an insurance company founded in 1720. He would become chairman of the corporation and one of its directors. He was of frail health and was incapacitated for much of his life. He died in 1932 in Chelsea committing suicide. Hutchinson was a noted teacher of golf and golf swings, and an authority on the game since at least his 1886 hints on the game of golf, followed by The Book of Golf and Golfers and Fifty Years of Golf, among others. However, he also wrote non-fiction works on history, as well as producing fiction. He wrote several detective novels, such as The Mystery of the Summer House or Murder in Monk's Wood but wrote other fiction as well. His miscellaneous fiction also contains the rather promising sounding The Fawn and the Philosopher, a forest fantasy. However, we shall be reviewing his very first work of fiction, That Fiddler Fellow, from 1881. The book takes place in Scotland in St Andrews and shows the signs of being an early work. There are the following ingredients, a mysterious cavern of ill omen that all the people in town avoid, where once stood an ancient church despoiled by Henry VIII, containing a fabled treasure. We have the young Miss Edith Macpherson and her lover and fiancé, George Craigie, who is about to join the army on a commission. And we also have, teaching at the local college, a mysterious foreigner, the Italian political exile Mattei, who is said to possess unbelievable skill at the violin, and takes a liking to Edith, visiting her house and teaching her how to play. Now he soon starts to talk at length about mesmerism and about how the science of hypnotism, which Hutchinson's narrator believes to be an actual science, is so much more advanced in the East. Soon enough, he has the girl perform odd things to show that he actually has mesmerized her and is in control of her actions. Neither she nor her father are very much disturbed by this, even when he repeatedly shows his ability to do so. Then the man shows great hatred of George Craigie, especially after George smashes his priceless violin over his familiarity with Edith. And the moment Mattei brings the Macphersons a dagger out of the blue, leaves it with them, but only after expositing how easily one may murder someone with it, someone should really have caught on. Indeed, George is murdered by a hypnotized Edith, but we don't get confirmation until after 20 pages of Mattei explaining every single eventuality leading to the event, even though we know about all of them already, as does Macpherson, Edith's father, who Mattei is blackmailing to allow him to marry her. Now why he wants that is the question. He spends weeks gaining control of her, and setting up his scheme to murder George. He says he likes Edith, but he also says she has some medium ability we never see. And he has to take her with him to Italy for some reason, because the whole reason he came to St Andrews is to find the treasure in the old church. And so he tries to use Edith to find the treasure, but is unable to. So he has to return to Italy to get more details out of the priest who told him about the treasure. But then he disguises Edith and takes her with him to Italy, making the entire plot point of blackmailing Macpherson for his permission moot. And then when Mattei gets to Italy, he just renounces the girl for no reason and has no use for her anymore. And also, Mattei told her she had murdered George off screen just to torture her, even though before he said he enjoyed her company while blackmailing her father, so there's no reason to assume he lied. And then, the priest who told Mattei about the treasure uses his own mesmeric abilities to free the girl of his power and influence. Also, Edith is freed almost instantly from his power, requiring no effort at all after setting up how much power he had over her for most of the book. Then the book jumps back and forth in time a few times to when Edith's old father is taken care of by the narrator. And then, a man with a fiddle starts playing under his window and Macpherson runs out with a dagger to kill the man who is apparently Mattei and who leads him into the tunnel and they disappear, never to be seen again. The narrator speculating they both died in the tunnel. When trying to find them, the narrator meets Edith, now crazy, who gets to spend the rest of her life in her old room under guardianship. And now, I have no idea why Mattei was here or why both disappeared into the tunnel never to be seen again. 
because apparently not even Hutchinson has any idea. So the end of the book is utterly confusing. And it's a shame, because it had a few good atmospheric moments. Like when the old man went mad with grief. But in the end it's bungled so amateurishly I don't know what to make of it.